Oh, thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, friends, everyone, good afternoon. It's really my pleasure to welcome you to the Inter-American Development Bank's Forum on Trade and Investment in the Americas. And let me just say, you're in the right place, right time, right region, and right institution. So welcome to all of you. As many of you know, and you've all gotten to know me well, I could not be more excited about the immense opportunities that exist today in Latin America and the Caribbean, as proud, as proud, that the IDB is leading in this critical conversation about the future of economic recovery and growth in which trade and integration has a central place. All of us want to talk about this, and I'm glad that we've been able to host you, and thank you for all of this participation. It's been nearly 20 years, 20 years, since the countries of the Americas last came together for a specific hemispheric meeting of this level to discuss trade and investment. 20 years, way too long. Let's not repeat that. Today's forum is a historic convocation of ministers from 20 countries and representatives of more than 100 multinational companies, and it's going to frame the discussions that will take place this week during the Ninth Summit of the Americas. So let's see where the region is today. Latin America and the Caribbean has overcome the most dire economic predictions of the last two years, which most everyone had concluded were unavoidable. Ongoing challenges from COVID-19, climate crisis, make the mitigating actions we have taken and those that we take today vitally important to guard against reversals in the gains we've achieved. And we face yet another upheaval regarding an issue that I have been passionate about since 2020, since day one of my presidency, the importance of recalibrating and repositioning global supply and value chains. Say it, nearshoring, nearshoring, nearshoring. And I got a lot of crap for it, but that is key. The opportunity exists. It's there today. And doing so, particularly to the benefit of Latin America and the Caribbean, it's not a geopolitical issue. It's about creating jobs, investments, and opportunities in Latin America and the Caribbean, first and foremost. The IDB has been at the vanguard of what has become the leading topic of global economic discussions because we already identified the competitive advantages and the potential areas of investment across our region. And by the way, we did that work more than a year ago. So today, Let's put that work, all of that work, into action. We have before us a once-in-a-generation opening for global trade insertion and nearshoring. And the moment to seize that is now. And if we lose it, we're not going to see it in any of our lifetimes. The stars have never been more aligned for Latin America and the Caribbean. We at the IDB have not held back in urging the region's leaders to jump through this window of opportunity. Depoliticize it. This is not a political issue. This is about growth investment, a unique opportunity to propel new partnerships with the international private sector, to achieve the growth and development that we need in these fraught times. For all of us, it's abundantly clear that to firmly establish medium and long-term growth, the region needs more public-private cooperation and a clear focus on the issues that we're discussing here today. And what is that? the essential elements for a modern trade agenda and for fostering investment in expanding and sustainable international commerce. Now, while there's no shortage of focus on the longstanding challenges that face Latin America and the Caribbean, we must properly acknowledge the region's longstanding potential and have the vision to recognize the ripening possibilities. In fact, an increasing number of companies already do so. Let me give you a great example. I love this example. Last month, a notice on the website of SoftServe many of you may have heard of. It's a software and IT outsourcing multinational. And it proclaimed, and it quoted, it said, Hola, Latin America. The company was announcing the opening of new offices in Guadalajara, Medellin, and plans for a Chile location. And their press release was great. It says, and I quote, Latin America is an attractive destination for the global delivery operations of major technology players. Our presence there will allow us to bring value to our North American clients by offering 24-7 nearshoring and offshoring options with minimum time shifts. We will also create new opportunities by investing in local communities and building and learning and reskilling capabilities for local talent. Wow. By the way, you're probably thinking, this is probably a China example, right? Because what we talk about is China. But SoftServe, which has offices and markets on both sides of the Atlantic, happens to have been founded in Ukraine. So amid war in its home country, it's looking for the best opportunities to increase its international competitiveness and finding that answer where? Like companies that are invested in China and elsewhere, in Latin America and the Caribbean. The greatest realignment of value chains in our lifetimes. Manufacturing from China after the close downs, uh, shutdowns, and now from Europe. 
We're a sea of peace and prosperity amongst fluctuations. So we're here today doing our job as the IDB to help identify how to get each of you in on the action yourself and realizing these nearshoring and FDI opportunities from throughout the world, from throughout the world for your own countries and for your businesses. And that's my job uh, to help you as our 26 borrowing nations, as my clients. First, we need to reconfigure regional value chains and improve nearshoring partnerships within the Americas and across Europe. Currently, more than 50% of the world's trade happens within global value chains and participating in them brings both economic and social benefits. Today, let's be honest, Latin America and the Caribbean is lagging other parts of the world in its global value chain participation. But we estimate that the region would experience an annual increase of nearly $80 billion annually in exports by seizing near-term, near, uh, uh, short-term, near-shoring opportunities. $80 billion per year. And indeed, progress in this area has a host of benefits, which you know. Productivity is enhanced. A 10% increase in a country's level of involvement in global value chains can lead to almost 2% increase in average labor productivity and a 10 to 15% increase in GDP per capita. It can also bring more and better jobs. Companies that are part of global value chains demand more skilled personnel, hire more women, and pay higher salaries than firms that only export or are not involved in trade. Today's supply chain disruptions, these historic disruptions caused by the pandemic and by Russia's war are triggering adjustments to commercial ties and adding as well, and you all are experiencing your country's global inflationary pressures. But it's a series of events over the past several years that is driving the urgency to realign trade. Even before Russia's invasion, a McKinsey survey found that nearly 90%, 90% of senior supply chain executives from across industries, from across geographies, expect to pursue some degree of regionalization during the next three years. Hey, by the way, in 1994, in the Summit of the Americas, the same event, there was political alignment, free trade area of the Americas, et cetera, but the companies, all of you guys here, we're looking towards China. Here, yeah, the politics are a little more complicated and we're all seeing it, et cetera, but guess what? Companies are looking to Latin America and the Caribbean. So let's depoliticize nearshoring. Let's depoliticize commerce. Let's depoliticize trade. This is a unique opportunity. We're kind of come full circle from 94 to today. Trade disputes, the soaring costs and carbon footprint of long distance shipping as well, by the way, as China's egregious human right record and crackdown on the tech sector, are also convincing businesses on the need to correct their over-reliance over the last 30 years on the country. Now, some of you may be shocked to learn that for the first time, so this is not just Mauricio and, and, and dreaming, but for the first time, investment indicators are going down for China at the same time as they're going up for Latin America and the Caribbean. That's never happened in our history. This year, Latin America's MSCI index, which you may follow, the Morgan Stanley Index for Emerging Countries, its performance the Latin America index performance has significantly outstripped Asia's, and the same is true of bond spreads. It's never happened before. It usually rose or fell together. Now, it's jointly, trend to regionalization. Now, filling in these trade and investment gaps and creating a more balanced global economy can give the region and the Americas overall a major economic and developmental jumpstart. Over the past year and a half, our trade and integration specialists from day one of my presidency have led an effort in 16 countries already, and we want to do all 26, to identify hundreds of products and businesses across industries that are readily available to benefit from nearshoring possibilities. And we're helping and working to help materialize those possibilities from all sides by leveraging our nearshoring toolkit, which we presented, of financial instruments, technical offerings for both the public and the private sectors. Our projects range from the modernization of a key port to unlock new trade for the Dominican Republic, to supporting the electronic single window for foreign trade in Peru, to investment in a new free trade zone in El Salvador for companies operating global supply chains. But we also need a modern trade agenda for Latin America and the Caribbean and for the hemisphere at large to help all of us connect the dots between what could be and what should be. Today, we're gonna to consider, we'll consider the reforms and the investments that countries can make to better attract that private sector and together build out the supply chains that are waiting to take shape. We'll also consider how to ensure that trade is sustainable 
both environmentally and socially, including how countries and companies can work together to protect the natural world and fight climate change and ensure that small businesses, women, and the, and the, and the diverse communities throughout the region can benefit from these stronger supply chains. Finally, we're going to look at trade and digitalization of the region's economies, which can throw open the doors to more competitive sectors, can help companies link up to supply chains and promote the transparency and the efficiency that's going to attract investment. Opportunities that fall by the wayside amount to little more than wishful thinking. And what all of us need today is action, not rhetoric. That happened in 1994. We need action. This forum is a reflection of the IDB's own new brand of action and the action that we're determined to espouse and support in both the public and the private sectors. We're aggressively pushing forward to create a truly modern bank, built around a holistic continuum of updated financial instruments and technical expertise from the IDB, the sovereign side, our innovation laboratory, IDB Lab, and our private sector arm, IDB Invest. Over the last year, guided by the priorities and the aspirations of our borrowing and your leadership of our clients, our borrowing member countries, we've taken steps to leverage our value proposition with more ambitious and more innovation than ever. Since I joined the bank in late 2020, the calls from the region for more to be done on trade, for more to be done on commerce, for more to be done and push forward nearshoring have been loud and clear. We hear you. We're working on it. And so we're excited about the historic reforms that were approved by our Board of Governors earlier this year that set us on this pathway towards a new 21st century business model and mandated a proposal, by the way, which we're starting to hear about, for a capital increase for IDB Invest, the bank's private sector arm, which have frankly advocated for since I think I ran for president of the IDB audit. This is going to digitalization for green finance and advances in gender equality. This integrated approach is frankly what can most effectively achieve the essential public-private symbiosis for the recovery of sustainable inclusive growth of Latin America and the Caribbean, including the growth of trade. The IDB is the only multilateral development bank, no, no, it's the only international financial institution, as a matter of fact, along with the government of Japan, it's the only institution in the world that finances nearshoring. And last year, the IDB and IDB Invest approved a record of nearly $4 billion to strengthen regional value chains and integration. That ranges, by the way, from investments to modernize key trade infrastructure and logistic procedures, to loans for increased connectivity for consumers and digitization of trade systems and small medium enterprises. Our support also includes IDB's invest support for the region's banks, which have made more than $12 billion available for foreign trade operations. It also includes, by the way, technical support for regulatory reforms, pro-transparency measures, which we need, of course, to improve investors' confidence, and by the way, go a long way toward reestablishing trust. And we put out a new report on trust recently, which is a vital element for a successful business ecosystem. Again, I'm super excited to see many of those investors, current and potential, here today amongst us. And I hope we can all take advantage of this impressive public-private gathering to forge new mutually beneficial projects. Many of the corporate leaders here today are members of our private sector's partner coalition, which now includes more than 160 of the world's top companies all committed to working with us to advance digital transformation, women's empowerment, environmental sustainability, and by the way, value chains and nearshoring, all priorities of our banks, Vision 2025 roadmap. Our country-specific nearshoring promotion events last year, which is a new product of the bank, these country-specific nearshoring events generated billions of dollars last year in expected deals, and there's much more to come in 2022. By the way, we have a major investment forum next week in Brazil, where we're gonna be making some exciting big announcements. Right now, we are making the biggest private sector push in more than 60 year history of the IDB. We're a private sector focused bank, more than any other international financial institution. And to guide our discussion today, and for the consideration obviously of your ministries and the C-suites, we're sharing with you the America's Business Dialogue's 2022 report to leaders. As you know, the America's Business Dialogue is a private sector led initiative, more than 400 companies facilitated by the IDB, and this report includes specific policy actions and key performance indicators on the topics that we're going to consider. Furthermore, based on the outcomes of today's conversations, the IDB will develop and share and create, based on your input, an action plan for how our institution will offer more innovative solutions in the public and private spheres for greater investment, trade, and integration. So now it's my distinct honor to shut up and to turn the floor to our ministers and private sector leaders with whom We've worked and I'm proud to have worked side by side on these issues. But before doing so, let me just end with a challenge for us all. That we can be as, 
ambitious as we possibly can when we consider the trade and investment potential of Latin America and the Caribbean. So much airtime is sucked up by politics. This time, this opportunity, this reconfiguration of global value chains is never going to happen again in my lifetime, let alone most of yours. So as you think bigger, please know that you have the full support of a 21st century IDB working and acting more strategically and with better use of our resources to reach new milestones for the region. So now I'll shut up. Thank you. Enjoy the event. And see you soon.